A systematic approach to oliguria in the ICU patient is mandatory due to the multifactorial etiology of this problem, which can deteriorate to anuria and necessitate renal replacement therapy. Timely diagnosis and prompt treatment will decrease morbidity and mortality from this potentially preventable problem. The management of AKIs includes the following. Resuscitate, differentiating urinary retention from oliguria, determine the cause of oliguria, perform biochemical investigations to ascertain severity and cause of acute kidney injury, AKI, urinalysis, monitor the patient, perform renal imaging, be suspicious of sepsis, maintain renal perfusion pressure, use diuretics judiciously, correct metabolic abnormalities, avoid nephrotoxic agents, detect acute kidney injury or AKI as early as possible. Let us now discuss these approaches individually. Resuscitate. Improving oxygenation and hemodynamics is significant in preventing kidney injury. Differentiating urinary retention from oliguria. Oliguria is defined as less than 0.5 milliliter per kilogram urine output for at least two hours. The suprapubic percussion is done for bladder fullness in cases of low urine output to exclude the cause of urine retention. Sudden drop of urine output, no urine, or fluctuating levels of urine output in a catheterized patient who is otherwise stable may indicate a partial or complete catheter block with clot, debris, or pericatheter leak. Ascertain this by physical examination, bladder wash, or replacing the catheter. Bedside ultrasonography differentiates retention from oliguria and at the same time confirms the catheter position. Determine the cause of oliguria. Identify if the cause is perennial. Determine the cause of oliguria. Identify if the cause is perennial. Identify if the cause is prerenal, renal, or postrenal cause. Perform biochemical investigations to ascertain severity and cause of acute kidney injury, or AKI. Serum chemistry, including sodium, potassium, creatinine, blood urea nitrogen, calcium, magnesium, phosphate, uric acid, and creatinine phosphokinase. If rhabdomyolysis is suspected, total protein, albumin, globulin, and unconjugated bilirubin to exclude hemolysis and lactate dehydrogenase should be checked. Antinuclear factor, or ANA, anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody, antineutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies, or ANCA, complement levels C3, C4, cryoglobulin, and hepatitis B and C serology tests can be performed. Serum and urine protein electrophoresis should be performed in patients with bone pain hypercalcemia, and hyperglobulinemia, where paraproteinemia is suspected. Urinalysis can yield vital clues about the type of renal failure. Microscopic examination of the urinary sediment should not be neglected. Abdominal ultrasound or non-contrast CT scan are useful to diagnose renal and post-renal oliguria. The USG may reveal echogenic or small kidneys with loss of corticomedullary differentiation, which might indicate a background of chronic kidney disease. The color Doppler flow can assess renal perfusion and rule out thrombosis. The volume status can be assessed by checking the diameter and collapsibility of the inferior vena cava. The radiologic examination is useful to detect renal stones and pelvic fractures. An MRI or retrograde or antegrade percutaneous contrast studies may be necessary to delineate the site or nature of obstruction or injury. Nuclear scans may be used to assess renal function, perfusion, or obstruction. 
Maintain renal perfusion pressure. Maintain mean arterial pressure, or MAP, of more than 65 milliliters of mercury by adequate volume loading and with vasopressors if necessary. MAP may have to be kept higher if the patient is hypersensitive or has a high IAP. In case of high IAP, renal perfusion pressure is equal to MAP minus 2 times IAP and a higher MAP is desirable. Dose of vasopressors should be kept the minimum, which is necessary for maintaining an adequate MAP. Diuretics should be used judiciously. The role of diuretic therapy does not affect renal outcome. However, in non-oliguric renal failure, management of the patient becomes easier. It creates some intravascular space for administering nutrition, intravenous antibiotics, blood and blood products where necessary. Diuretics create an acetic urine milieu, which might predispose to myoglobin precipitation and oxalate crystallization. The potential toxicities of diuretics include worsening of hypovolemia, metabolic alkalosis, and interstitial nephritis. Correct metabolic abnormalities. Manage metabolic abnormalities, which may be a result of renal impairment, such as hyperkalemia, hyper or hyponatremia, and hypocalcemia. High urea creatinine ratio is suggestive of volume depletion gastrointestinal bleeding, catabolic state, or high protein feed. A high creatinine urea ratio is associated with rhabdomyolysis, or may indicate chronic kidney disease, CKD. If rhabdomyolysis is suspected, the maintenance of urinary pH at more than 7 by systemic alkalization is indicated. Avoid nephrotoxic agents. Prior to elective radiocontrast imaging study, Administer N-acetylcysteine at a dose of 600 mg twice per day. It can be administered for three days along with hydration with 0.9% saline. Avoid nephrotoxic antibiotics. Aminoglycosides, if used, should be dosed once daily. Intravenous acyclovir may cause crystal nephropathy. High-dose mannitol may lead to osmotic nephropathy. NSAIDs should be avoided. Detect acute kidney injury, AKI, as early as possible. RIFLE criteria, risk, injury, failure, loss, end-stage kidney disease, should be followed in all ICUs to stratify AKI. Serum and urinary biomarkers like NGAL, neutrophil gelatin-associated lipocalin, have been found to be useful in early detection of AKI. Limitations of using these parameters for differentiating pre-renal from renal injury include the use of diuretics, post-contrast IV contrast, CKD, elderly, acute glomerulonephritis, acute interstitial nephritis, hyperglycemia, and epitorenal syndrome. We have reached the end of this session. Let us recap some of the key points discussed. AKI is the designation for a diverse group of conditions including some specific and non-specific kidney diseases, as well as some extra renal pathologies that share common diagnostic features, like raised serum creatinine and reduced urine volume. It incorporates the entire scale from trivial changes in renal markers to a need for renal replacement therapy.